Hi, welcome. Simon here. I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be doing a teardown on a Dell XPX. Let me show you the model number here. So if you flip the computer to the back, and if you take a closer look, you can see that it says P82G. This is the Dell XPX. And let's turn it around. And let's go ahead and remove all the screws and the back panel. So the screws are torque screws. They are using a T5. This is a T5 screwdriver. Um, let's go ahead and remove all the screws. So this computer had a wine spill on the keyboard. And I'd like to take it apart, take a look at it, and see how much wine has gotten into the computer and see what is the damage in there. The computer still turns on, it still boots to Windows, but just that this, the keys sometimes are a bit sticky. And I'd like to see if the keyboard is replaceable. Sometimes the computer froze for no reason. There might be something else is wrong with it. So. Uh, just take a quick look and see what we can find. It looks like the uh, it looks like they there is screws underneath the rubber. So let's go ahead and peel the rubber off. Oh, there's no screws underneath the rubber. My mistake. Let's go ahead and put it back in. It feels okay. So let me recap what happened here. First, I thought there were screws underneath the rubber. Sometimes you would have to remove the, the hidden screw to get to the back plate. But for this model, it doesn't have it. I was just not enough. Um, I did not put enough strength to peel or to open up the back plate. So what you want to do is once you remove all the screws, Two on the top, two on the side, four at the bottom, and you put a little bit of strength and you can just lift up the back plate. Alright, so once I remove the back plate, the first thing I realize is there's no moisture here. This is the battery, and if you want to change the battery, and this is how you're going to do it, um, you need to disconnect the cable right here. Slide it down, go ahead and disconnect the cable. These are just a regular Phillips screws. Now, if your battery is not holding the charge and if you take it apart, it feels like the battery is lump, like swollen, then that is the time where you need to change the battery. Or if you feel like the touchpad is not clickable, right? If you feel like your touchpad is having a hard time to click, you don't feel the clicking noise to it, then more likely what happened is that the battery from the back of this computer is pushing, is bulging on the key, uh, on the touchpad on the other side of it, right? So uh, more likely, if you feel like your touchpad is not click clicking, then the battery needs to be replaced. That's my guess. All right, so if you take a look at here, the model here is DXGH8. That is the model for the battery. And... You can also look up for this number here. That is the, the battery's number as well. Um, what I can do is I'll link them in the description below where you can go ahead to uh, check out either from Amazon or eBay. That's where usually I would put the link to where you can find the replacement uh, parts. All right, so I remove five screws, one, two, three four five and the battery will just come straight up i do see some moisture right here some stain it's more likely those are the wine stain that that came in 
All right, let's move on to the next process. What I like to do is remove this uh, heat sink. And this heat sink is to cover up the M.2 SSD drive. Okay, so this is your M.2 drive, which is your hard drive. And this hard drive here is 512 gigabytes. Okay, now if you try to upgrade the M.2 to a larger drive, what I recommend you to do is to get one of these USB adapter. This USB adapter allows you to um, pull the data out of the drive, right? You insert here, make sure you put the screws here to hold it tight, or you can use a tape to tape it down. Plug it into any computer, you can see your file. Okay, I make a separate video as well regarding about cloning the hard drive. If you feel like the drive is too small and you'd like to upgrade to like one terabyte, uh, check out on the link description below. I make a separate video on how to clone an M.2 over to the larger drive. All right, so this is your CPU fan and the heatsink is right here. Let's go ahead and disconnect some of the cables. So this here is for your speaker. You can slide to your left. That's how you disconnect that. This is your CMOS battery. You can disconnect the CMOS if you want to, you know, reset your BIOS or things like that. Uh, this is the motherboard connector. What you need to do is to flip open that little clipper. It's a white clipper and I flip it from, from the bottom here. I flip it up at about 90 degree angle. So this is close and this is up and you can slide the cable down to remove it. All right, let's work on the next one. This is your touchpad. Open up the black clipper. That's how you do it. This wire right, right here runs along is to go to the other side of your speaker. Remove the two screws, remove the bracket. This is for your LCD screen connector. And what you want to do is you push straight up. That's how you disconnect the LCD connector. So for this one, this connector right here, it looks like a Lego. It snapped onto the motherboard. To remove it, I tuck my plastic prying tube underneath that cable and just lift it up. And that's how I disconnect it. This is your Wi-Fi. The white cable is on the top. The down cable is the black. Same thing, I tuck it underneath the cable and lift it up. That's how I disconnect it. This is your CPU fan connector let's go ahead and push it away from your body in that direction and that's how you disconnect the cable I'll be removing the heat sink right now
So just a quick recap here. There are two cables for your CPU fan, each cable dedicated to its own fan speed. So like this one here is on the left, dedicated to this cable. The right here is dedicated to this right cable. And the connector is here, it says fan, fan, right? Left fan, right fan. And you need to remove the two screws, one from here and one on the other side. And these are the four screws for the heat sink. The heat sink doesn't come out by its, I mean, the, uh, the screw doesn't come out. Uh, you can just only loosen up the screw and you remove the entire CPU fan and a heat sink all one piece together. Now, if your CPU fan is broken, it's not spinning, um, or the fan is not working at all, uh, unfortunately, you would have to replace the entire heat sink with the CPU fan. Looks like this is one piece together. Now, if you want to look for the parts, let's go ahead and take a quick look here. It says 0WCX. 2D. That is the uh, the number for this heatsink and the CPU replacement. If you feel like your laptop is running too hot and the fan is always constantly on high speed, meaning that it could be all dried up. So this thermal paste here is all dried up. As you can see, it's not moist at all. So which is which has been a while the computer. So what you want to do is you want to get alcohol wipes and wipe it down. Once you wipe it down, you can get a thermal paste. So this is the alcohol wipes that I use. Go ahead and wipe down the thermal paste on both sides, the heat sink here, and as well as the CPU. Once you wipe it down, go ahead and get your thermal paste and apply the thermal paste on it. That's how you can cool off the laptop and kind of, uh, uh, you know, reduce the heat that is building up. Now the next part is what I like to do is disconnect this cable. It just like a Lego, it snaps on. I just lift it up and I like to remove the motherboard. I like to see how bad it is on the motherboard on the other side of it. All right, once I remove all the screws, you can just pop straight up on the motherboard. It looks like the back of the motherboard looks okay to me. I don't see any corrosions. Uh, might be a little bit stained right here. I just wipe it off. That's pretty much it. And this is the power button, I believe. It's on the other side of it. So this must be the power button uh, on the left here. All right, let's move the motherboard on the side. And let's talk about the screen. So if you're planning to replace the screen, uh, you need to re remove the hinge. So there are two screws on the hinge. Go ahead and remove them. And I'm just flipping the hinge up to 90 degree angle. See if I can slide the keyboard up. All right, so this is your entire screen. In my suggestions, I would highly recommend you to change out the entire screen, the full assembly like this for the screen. So if you have a cracked screen 
or if your LCD is damaged, if you get pixelated, fuzzy color, what, whatever happened to your screen. And if you need a screen replacement, I highly recommend you to replace the entire screen like this. This is a touch screen and it's all built in. And I don't recommend to just replace the glass because it's going to be very difficult for you to do. And it's not going to be perfect because there's a calibration on a touch digitizer. So if, if that thing is not aligned properly or something is wrong, then you will have very difficult time. So I'd rather have you to replace the entire screen just like this, the full assembly. Now in terms of the keyboard, um, the keyboard feels okay to me. I wonder what, how much wine that was spilled. This is a customer keyboard, I mean laptop, so I still need to further diagnose it. Uh, but I just like to quickly show you how to do the teardown process here. And if you plan to change the keyboard, it looks like the keyboard is replaceable. You just have to remove all these screws right here and get to the keyboard and replace it. But for this video, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but if I were you, I highly recommend to just buy the full assembly like this rather than remove the keyboard and change it out. They might save you some money, but in terms of time and cost, maybe buying the whole thing might be a better deal for you. All right, so um, before I end the video, if you have any question, comment below. I do read your question uh, and I do answer back your question through the comment. So hit the like button if you haven't and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I appreciate you for doing that. And tell me if this video actually helps you in the teardown or any of your repair, or if you're planning to upgrade your hard drive, things like that. Just comment below, talk to me. I'd like to hear from you. Uh, but other than that, until next time, please take care. Bye now.